Hey guys, Bored now back with you with my movie review and on this video it's a brand new release or a recent release and that is Terminator Dark Fate, the sixth film in the Terminator franchise. So I'm pretty fresh off this, I saw this yesterday at my local cinema and I have quite a few thoughts. Now I won't go full spoilers, I won't it won't be a massively in-depth review, but I will give my overall impressions and there will be some spoilers just to warn you of some important scenes and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll use some examples of, of what I think to show what I think of the film in general. So this is quite highly anticipated, partly because James Cameron is back involved. Of course, he directed the original two movies um and he he had a hand in the story he put he you know he's got a producer's credit there's quite a different name quite sorry start that sentence again quite a few different names involved in the story cameron didn't actually write the final screenplay but yeah certainly some of his ideas are at least said to have been in this final film so Cameron returns, also Linda Hamilton returns, that's the other significant sort of comeback from the original movie. She, you sort of haven't really seen Linda Hamilton in much for years really, obviously people associate her with the original two Terminator reviews, um, sorry, movies. So to see her back here after all this time... And that's obviously part of the point of the film, you know, how things have come full circle. So it is a big deal. It was, you know, a big part of the publicity. And I mean, as as you'll know from the trailers, Arnie is back as well, but he's been in, in every Terminator film anyway. So in a way, Hamilton returning feels like the bigger deal. Arnie, you know, just feels like part of the furniture at this point. But in any case, I, I think the fact that Hamilton's back and Sarah Connor's back and she has that interaction with Arnie is that that makes his appearance, you know, a, a bit more significant, if you like. But uh, yeah, worth mentioning that in the setup. And the film's directed by Tim Miller, who directed the Deadpool movie. So yeah, you'd think quite a different sort of project for him than those films but it, it's worth saying he is said to be a big Terminator fan he grew up on the original movies and has a lot invested and it's worth pointing that out before I start talking about the film because you know sometimes that can be a good thing to have a fan directing a movie um, you know a movie a franchise that he's in love with he has invested in and sometimes it's a really bad thing because they don't have that they don't have that detachment I think sometimes they get a little bit carried away with the ideas and oh I could do this I could do this and you know there's not always a lot of rain in themselves in um, so that's like the downside and what I mean, one of the big examples and probably the worst example of this is Rob Zombie with the Halloween movies, the Halloween remake and then its sequel. You know, you have this example of this guy who going in, he was a fan growing up. He, he loved the original Halloween and you think, oh, OK, well, at least you've got someone on board who cares and then he just shat it away, basically. He made a terrible remake of, of the original masterpiece with all these unneeded add-ons. It's a really badly directed film. It's a really boring film. He totally rips the heart out of the original film and misses the point of what the original film was doing. So that's a classic example of of how bad things can turn out when, when you have a fan, you know, directing these things. It's all funny thinking about these things, because, of course, if you want the opposite example, Tim Burton famously wasn't a Batman fan, and so I think that's always held against him, you know, directing the Batman movies, 
the 89 one and the 92 sequel and some people say well yeah they're not great films and you can sort of see why but that that's the other end of it but it can work either way it can be a good thing being a fan because you have that investment you care you want to do a good job but on the other hand it, it can lead to a bit of an ego thing and just yeah and also, which, uh, not to spoil too much of what I think of this film, but it can lead to overly fan service. It can lead to too many nods and too many, you know, maybe trying to be a bit too clever. Whereas if you have that inta- detachment, but you, you just did, you just come in and you want to do a good movie, sometimes that can work better. But you sort of need a middle ground. I think you need some sort of passion, some sort of attachment. But. Yeah, it it doesn't always work out if if you're meant to be this hardcore fan. So the the setup of Terminator Dark Fate, I'll say I've only ever seen the original two Terminator films, obviously, and and they're held up as masterpieces, and I I don't disagree with that, especially not with the first one. The first one I absolutely love. And I think it is pretty much perfect. The storytelling, the characters, the action scenes, just the whole concept. And it was it was such a simple film in a way. And that's what's beautiful about it. Really good effects. Great concept. It works perfectly. And the second one expands on that. The second one does something very different. Which is what you want from a sequel. And, and the action and the effects are taken to a whole new level in T2 Judgment Day. I actually think it's a little bit overrated. I don't... I know it's a popular opinion and it's even better than one. I don't agree with that. I think it does have flaws. I think it has issues with just the script, really, the story and the structure. And maybe it tries to do a bit too much. It would be my criticism. But it's still a very good film. It's really satisfying. It, it's a great example of how you do a sequel. So the first two Terminator films, highly recommended. But I'll be honest, I haven't seen any of the other the other three, I think it is. Terminator 3, Salvation, Genesis, which came out a few years. I haven't seen any of those three, those other sequels but by all accounts they are absolute stinkers they are terrible that's the reputation they have and from what i've seen the clips and all that and what i know of them there's there's nothing to sort of discount that so obviously there was hope going into this then this could raise the bar again this could could refresh things in in a really positive way and it is quite a familiar setup for the, for the Terminator franchise. So we open, and what this film is doing is it's basically erasing those other sequels. It, it is try, trying to, to act as a Terminator 3, if you like, so coming, coming on the back of Judgment Day. So it, it does do some kind of retcon type thing where it opens and we see... It opens in 1998, which is obviously post-Judgment Day. And it opens on a beach and we see like the machines coming through the waves and onto the land. And, you know, they're here and they're, but, and then you get the, um, obviously the Terminator as we know him, the Yarny Terminator. And we see that he finally catches up with Sarah Connor and with her son, John Connor, Edward Ferlin, a brief cam- cameo, and then he's gone because basically Arnie kills him. But that's obviously retcon because that's not the way things actually went down. But they, they, they've, um, they've retconned that in because obviously they need a, a storyline for this film. They need a plot for Sarah Connor in this film. They need motivation for her to be anti the Terminator. Um, so we see this scene on the beach where he actually finally gets to John and he kills John. And I heard something, it's because partly because Ferland didn't want to be in the movie or, or something like that. So there's some de aging here because, you know, it's Arnie as he, he would probably look in 98. 
um, and obviously the de-aging on, on Sarah and also um, on, on Edward Furlong and we actually open with a memorable scene from T2 which is Sarah in the police station almost taking over the Kyle Reese role from the first one where he's where she's desperately trying to get across you know what's going to happen and, and the future of the world and it's a memorable scene she really gives it her all really like like goes into them about it um, but so that, that's quite a nice way to open that sort of flashback. But that's how we start with the beach scene with with um, the Terminator killing John. And then we fast forward to Mexico in in the, in the present. And so Mexico is sort of this new setting and we introduce to this character of Danny. And we see a bit of her home life at home. She's got a brother. She's got a father. She works in a factory. And Danny's played by Natalia Reyes. So she's one of the new characters. One of the other new characters is Grace, who is played by Mackenzie Davis, who has popped up in a few things. She was in Blade Runner 2049. She was in Tully, which is quite an underrated film. I enjoyed that one. Um, Halt and Catch Fire she was in on TV but really good actress from what I've seen R really versatile and always good from what I've seen um, so she plays almost this it's sort of a good Terminator but not exactly it's more she's more in the Kyle Reese role of, of the first film where she's sort of a soldier so she because this new Terminator, which isn't Arnie, I keep track at home, it's not Arnie, but the new Terminator, actually played by um, Gabriel Luna, he arrives, so we see Grace arrives, drop through the sky, naked, classic Terminator entrance, so she's been sent to the future, or to the past, sorry, yeah, the past, to save... Um, what did I say her name? Um, Danny, to save Danny from the Terminator, the evil Terminator. So we see her arrive and we see a nod again to the older films because she actually has to get close. So she holds up like this this biker guy and, or something like that and gets his clothes. So another kind of nice little nod to the older film. But she's there to save Danny, who is now being pursued by the Terminator, the new evil Terminator, as I said, Gabriel Luna, who who similarly crash lands into Danny's apartment, into the in onto Earth in the present day, and he's immediately hunting Danny, and he's like a bit like the Terminator in Terminator Two. He's assuming human form can take on different disguises, he can melt down, all these different things, but they've added a few modifications. So that's kind of the plot, and then at, at one point they run into Sarah Connor, Lin, Lin, Linda Hamilton, because she basically has been tracking the Terminator, and she's been getting these sort of text messages. So they've updated the plot to do with technology, and so she becomes part of the whole mission to try and save Danny and and the the idea is that that she because she was once Danny so that's her motivation and I should just say then the Grace character is a hybrid so she's mostly human but she does have like the super advanced technology feature sort of thing so she is part kind of machine as well but but mostly sort of humor and who and we see that early on with her we do see the more humanistic sort of features and reactions um and then later on we of course run into arnie and arnie there's this tension between arnie that terminator and linda hamilton because of him killing her son but the whole sort of twist with that is then He's different now. He has become more. He he has developed a sort of a m m 
mortality since then, a morality, uh, a conscience, um, which, I mean, the film goes into that. I won't necessarily spoil why that is, but there is a reason given in the film. But the, obviously they figure they have to work together to save Danny. So you, in the end, you get the, these four sort of characters. So let's let's start with what, what I think about it. I think obviously the gag is it, it's the it's the third best Terminator film, <laughs> which of course isn't really saying much. So I, I don't doubt it is the f- the third best Terminator film, and the reason for that is because it's not terrible. It, it's not actually that bad. There are good ideas. I think there's ideas that don't get built on enough, but they are good ideas. It has good moments. I can't argue with the casting. I think the casting is pretty much pretty solid, pretty good overall. I was impressed with Reyes as Danny. Obviously, I really like Mackenzie Davis. And, I mean, Arnie as Terminator, you can't really go wrong. It's a nice little cameo. I sort of wish they'd left it as a cameo rather than him becoming a big part of the second half of the movie. I Linda Hamilton is a good actress. She's back. She's she's on good form. Though I think they could have used Sarah a bit better than they did. So the casting is generally good. But I do have quite a few problems with, with it. Overall, I think it is a disappointing Terminator film. It doesn't quite live up to what it could have been. First of all... I think it is it is really generic at times. I think the effects aren't particularly good. I didn't like the effects. Although the de-aging stuff on the beach at the start is good, I didn't actually like the, the overall effect. And I didn't like the way they were just retconning this in just for an, an excuse for a plot. I thought that was really clunky. And it just took me a, a bit out of the film. So that did bother me. And um, I think the effects overall are pretty bad. There are some good ones. I mean, the sort of liquid effect and some of the stuff they do with the new Terminator is really neat. And it's funny because Miller is meant to be a good like director of action set pieces. And I don't think in this film you see that very often. I mean, maybe it's just because things get so overloaded and... and they take on a life of their own. But I really zoned out a lot of times when you had a chase scene or an action scene. You know, there's some neat moments in there, but it just felt like a generic sort of computer game that was going through the motions. It got very silly, particularly near the end of the film, like there's this extended like plane sequence. And it just felt like they had to tick a box. They had to go a step further then they were trying to top previous Terminator films, whereas I think just scaling it down a bit more and making making it feel more special when you add an action scene would have been the better approach. But that scene on the plane particularly was, was just, just so silly. It was just so over the top and you had all these different elements flying around and you lose track of it. It just felt quite hollow, really. And most of the action scenes did. It's not like... Because James Cameron is is a really great action director. I mean, that's one of the things that stand out in the original two movies. So, I mean, obviously, when you don't have him directing... I mean, someone like Catherine Bigelow, I mean, I might be thinking of her because she was once married to James Cameron, but she does really good action direction. Someone like her would, uh, you you could see her maybe doing a good Terminator movie or certainly a good, she would have directed these action scenes a lot better, but they're just overloaded. They overdo it with the CGI, the CGI isn't particularly good it doesn't add much it it looks very sort of fake and sort of forced um another problem i have is that it 
it goes overkill with the fan service. You would have seen some of this in the trailer. You see Linda Hamilton doing a little I'll be back moment. That moment feels forced. It feels a bit cheesy. It's quite early in the film. Um, and it does feel like it's being a bit too winking and nodding, being a bit too smug. And I think her character, although I enjoyed seeing her back, after a while they overuse it and... Yeah, it just feels a little too cartoony. They don't really do enough interesting stuff with her. And she does feel wasted. The actress does her best. And the stuff with her and Arnie I quite like, but they sort of overdo it and it sidetracks the plot. And as a result of that... You lose a sense of the other characters. You lose a sense of Danny. You lose a sense of Grace. It's like, let's do the Terminator Sarah Connor show. You know, you, you have to sidetrack the plot a little bit. And I do think the new characters, the way they're written, they're not actually very good. Although I like the, the actors involved. I just don't think... I mean, for example, with Danny, I mean, some people have said, well, it's good that she's proactive and stuff. And I can understand that. But they do sort of rush that side. They do because she develops this special bond with Grace. And we see that Danny is quite a determined person. And she has that in, in her personality. And she is a fighter. So... You know, whatever, that works quite well, and, and it's good to see that. The actress does a good job. I think she's she was a natural, actually. But the relationship between Grace and Danny, they just rush that. You know, it's quite early on in the film when, when Danny is saying, you know, I won't let them do anything to Grace. And she's got a gun, she's trying to protect. And you just feel, well, you haven't really known her this long. I mean... It's not like in the first film when the Kyle Reese, Linda Hamilton or Sarah Connor, you know, you really get a sense of their relationship, but it's built over the course of the, of the film. And um, you don't you don't get that so much here. It's quite rushed. It's quite early in their relationship where they you start they start playing on this special bond and you think, well, would would she really have this special bond this early into into knowing Grace? I mean, it just just felt forced. The pacing, I think, is a problem. I don't think it's very well paced at all, unlike the original film. Um, so I like the actress playing Danny, and I certainly like some of the things they're doing with her. I like the setting of Mexico, of course, that has history in the Terminator franchise and i do like that they're updating some of the politics they are involving real world politics and what's going on right now the tension between the us and mexico there's a scene in a in a um in a detention center so i do like that stuff there are good ideas some of the ideas they don't spend enough time with that's part of the problem but mexico as a say makes sense and i like some of that political stuff even if they could have done more of it but yeah i just feel danny doesn't get enough time to grow as a character or they don't you don't spend enough time with her at the beginning and then they try to force this relationship with her and grace this bond and it feels a, a bit too deja vu for me it feels a bit like well, this is just too similar to the original movies, but with obviously the odd twist. And I mean, there is obviously a, a plot twist. There is obviously a reason. And there's 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 a new... There's a reveal involving Danny. Then it's not because she is pregnant, by the way. So they're playing on that, that um, Sarah Connor thing from the first film where obviously they were trying to kill her because in the future she would give birth to John who would stop, would be the leader of the... Res so there's a twist on that. Well, it's spoilers. So I will, it's then actually Danny's the one who's going to lead the resistance. So she's, 
it's not her 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 offspring it's going to be her so there's that line from hamilton she's me essentially or she's john sorry that that's the line so you know that that's a perfectly good twist um but yeah it just feels forced and you have this whole thing with with danny and grace where they show it in flashbacks and stuff like that i don't like um so even though they justify grace's existence in the movie with that plot I still don't feel like she has much of a character. She's very watchable because um, because Davis is so... I, mean, I forgot her first name, for Dickenzie Davis, um, is, is so good. You know, she's really good at, at having that, you know, really powerful... You know, she's really bulked up and physical and tough. But she balances that with a more, slightly more human side, slightly more grounded. So it's a really good performance and I enjoy watching her in the movie. I just don't think the character has enough to do and is that integral. That I think they sort of shoehorn the reason she's there and the reason Danny's there. But it didn't really convince me. And the problem is, I think then there's just too many characters in the film. It's just overloaded. I think if you just had Grace and Danny, and then you maybe had Lima, sorry, Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor, as a as a supporting role, as a cameo, you know, you could have a nice little trio with her obviously being the experienced one, her giving the advice, her because that's the way they go at the end of the film, then she's going to be training Danny for the future. So you, you had a nice little trio there, but by adding Arnie and having him become part of the main mission, and obviously he has his moment where he sacrifices himself. Not obviously, but yeah, anyway, that's the way they go. Um, it's sort of... It's overloaded. I don't think you need the four of them constantly, like, fighting for screen time. And that's the thing about the Arnie cameo. If it was a cameo, if you just had him when they when they go to his house and you have the whole tension with him and Sarah, but you also have him, we see this more human side of, of the Terminator, and we see him because now he's got wife, wife and kids that's the whole thing but there's there's little there's little differences like he can't have physical contact sort of thing or he can't have physical relations but if you just had that scene if you just had a 10 minute cameo from Arnie and there's some nice little jokes I, I love the nod to the previous films and the sunglasses because because before they're about to leave he looks down at the sunglasses and he, he actually decides not to wear them. He walks off. So I like that little nod to the other movie movies. The franchise. But yeah. Keep it as a 10 minute cameo. You don't need Arnie for the whole of the back half of the film. This is roughly halfway for the, of the film. So you get roughly an hour of Arnie. Maybe a little less. It's about a two hour movie. But no, you don't need him that long. It was fine with the three characters we we had. Grace and Danny as the lead. Hamilton, Connor as, as a supporting role, as a cameo. And a small cameo for Arnie, 10 minutes. The stuff at the house is really good. That should have been it, in my opinion. You, di you didn't need it. Because, I mean, they're planning to maybe have more movies. Maybe have this as a... a a refresher although the box office hasn't been actually very good it's an expensive movie and it is struggling to make the money back and nowadays they have to make double so we may not get any more terminators not for a while it's it's not going to go away altogether they'll do that thing of they'll leave it you know four or five years and then they'll decide the time is right again because Enough time has passed, a bit like what happened with the Batman franchise. 
But so far, the box office has been disappointing. And it's been out a couple of weeks. So it's the sort of movie where if it doesn't make its money back quite quickly, chances are it, it probably won't or it won't make enough money. So this could be the last one for a while. But the hope is in this movie, you can see they're trying to refresh things, trying to return back to basics and start a new sort of franchise, a new series with Danny. So my point is they could have used Arnie later. I think it should have been a 10 minute cameo. But those are my overall thoughts. There are certainly positives, but it just... I The storytelling isn't very good. I didn't like the flashbacks. Some of the flashbacks were better than others, but they overdid it with the flashbacks. They overdid it with the backstory, people standing around delivering the plot. The cast are very good, although they could have done a bit more with the characters. Some of the nods to the previous films I liked. I liked that they had that in there for the fans. But again, they overdid that a bit too much. But there are some good moments. The action definitely lets it down. The action and the overall storytelling just isn't good enough. It just feels too crammed in. You get a sense of deja vu. And it's a shame, you know, there are some really good character moments. The cast I can't complain with. I suppose the other thing I'll point to, though, with with the characters is that the new Terminator, um, the actor is fine. I don't have a problem with him. But unlike Arnie in the original movie, you, you barely get any time with him. It's only little bits here and there. So it feels a bit lopsided in that sense. You don't get to know him. I mean, obviously, you don't want too much time with him. We kind of know who the main characters are. But I think you wanted a bit more time. You wanted a bit more development, a bit more seeing what he's about outside of just like the action sequences. And obviously, you can assume different identities. But yeah, he doesn't get enough time for me. So... Although he looks pretty impressive and the actor's pretty good, you barely get to know this this new Terminator. So, so yeah, that that's another disappointment. So overall, it, it is pretty forgettable. It's a bit of a mess. There's enough good things for me to say, watch it and give it a go. And you will get some stuff out of it, but... I don't know, I think I might watch it again because I have heard other positive, more positive reviews. So so maybe I'm being a bit harsh on it. But overall, I, I was left a bit cold by it. And as I said, probably the third best Terminator movie. But again, that's not saying much. So, so I'll come to my rating, which is a 4.5 out of 10. So not terrible. It has its moments. It's worth seeing. But overall, not very good. That's my review of Terminator Dark Fate, which is on general release now. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll be back with more movie reviews soon. Goodbye.